Good day, guys. I've got a uh, a dead GPX 5000 here, and it's showing it no signs of life uh, at all. It's um, it's already been to been to some place for some. Uh, service to see if they could fix it and the word comes back that they can't fix it so anyway I've had a bit of a look at it the front end which you can't see at the moment because I've got the camera there this is this is very awkward doing this but the front end of it up here and this I see here was smoked. Also, I'll have to move this around. This is going to be really, really awkward the way I've got this set up because I had it set up to look at other things and now I've got it all tightened. Now things won't move. Okay, we'll try that. Here we go. Oh, dear me, that's not going to work either. Yep. No, hang on, I know what I'm doing wrong. I'm undoing the wrong knob. That one. Yeah, that'll work. A bit. Okay, don't know if you can see. Turn that one down. I had to replace um, both the 5 volt and 15 volt um, output stages for the transmit pulses. There's nothing there. The other thing that was interesting as well was the uh, voltage stabiliser for the flyback uh, return voltage which is oops, get my fat fingers out of the way is that one there was also shorted so I replaced that and now I'm going to uh, keep adjusting this there we go and now, as you can see, I've just done this IC here. Um, I'll show you what I've done because I, these chips on occasion, the legs become um, detached from the solder pads. And these things have like 200 and something legs on it, I think. And they're very, <clears throat> very very small dot pitch when I say dot pitch I mean very small pitch um, the spacing between the pins I'm not sure exactly what it is off the top of my head but a normal IC is um, 0 0.1 of an inch or you know um, 0.245 of a millimeter on these these ones standard but these these are more than half of that again first of all if you're going to do the chip legs with the white paint on it you're going to get yourself my hand now you're going to get yourself one of these it's like a dremel tool and it has a wire disc on it it's the only thing that will work unless you want to use paint stripper and stuff like that don't use it it'll get under the chip it'll cause conduction the chip will never work the detector will never work it even if you fix it it still won't work you have to use something like this and what I do with this I spin her up and I just go along the edge of the chips like so so this one I've done and I've given it a reflow a solder reflow not the way probably people think you do a solder reflow but I'll see if I can zoom in on that I think I'm pushing the limits but if you can have a good look at that that's uh, been reflowed and I'm going to show you how to reflow I'm going to do it on the big IC the main processor which um, always scares the hell out of everybody 
but it's a chance it could be one of the pins has come come off the board there's a lot of control function on this detector it's just not doing anything either either that thing there's blown up or that's blown up but we'll soon find out but now what I've done is we'll get rid of some of this stuff I've gone around the pins with some flux okay and I'll show you what now I've got this thing zoomed in see how awkward it is you need a cameraman <laughs> to do this there you go look at that it's massive there you go soldering flux this is made by deoxit I think it comes where did I get it from uh, it's not the Japanese one, some other company. But anyway, um, I think I got it off eBay. Big tub of um, soldering flux. And what I do with that, horrible gooey stuff, you can probably see there, I've gone around the whole IC. Now, to do this, you need a very, very hot, within reason, Um, there we go, soldering iron, and you need a very clean tip, so I'll just clean my tip over there on the sponge. You don't want excess solder on your tip, you want to get it all off. So, looks pretty good to me. Now I'm going to get right down here, I've got my um, magnifier, head magnifier on, because it's very, very hard to see the individual pins and you don't want to create any short circuits with solder between the pins. But I think this is set up so you can probably see. I'm going to get right down here close. I'm going to refocus these glasses. Okay, what do I do? I get the iron and lightly drag it along the legs and there's a short. Go back, pick up the solder. Just like I'm doing now. Don't stay on one spot too long. Now, let's have a quick inspection. I think I've done a clean job on that. Nothing shorted. Just don't like the excess solder on the end pin. Okay. Tell me a quick scan. It's very easy to make a short. But if you have plenty of heat... The solder will usually jump off the pins and back onto the iron. Now, this one here is going to be damn awkward because of the plug. I can't get, get the angle I want as I'm going to um, shove the soldering barrel onto that um, or the uh, socket there. I shouldn't call sockets plug, should I? But the other way of doing it is pick the whole thing up and turn it around like so I don't even know if you can where am I there I am okay I'm gonna do it again on this side so up I go and I'm just inspecting that and there's no shorts. You'll probably be able to see that quite easily. Can you see any shorts? I can't. But I will check it even better more closely in a second. Okay, we'll go around the other side of the IC here. I'll get in close. I don't know what the camera's doing. I'm not looking at it. And that looks okay to me as well. Round we go again. It's awkward. I've got the um. Oops, there it goes. Okay. Okay, I 
just going to do this one here. I should be able to do it on this angle. Now, I've already got solder building up on my iron. I've got to get rid of that. That's just excess from the um, IC. Anyway, here I go. I probably confused myself and there's a lot of solder coming off this side. It's it's making short circuits. Get the flux in there. You don't want to make short circuits. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> oh dear me. So that's done. That's done. That's gonna do a little bit up here. More solder build up, get it off the iron. Keep the heat up. And that looks okay as well. Actually, the way to, to actually uh, tell if you've done a good job is you use the, um, I'm using an iPhone, it has really good magnification. And you just take a picture of all those sides of the IC. And I'm losing light on that one, but yeah. Oops, that's not going to help. I can just do this very quickly. It's very difficult because I'm not really set up to do this like this, but I need more light. Anyway, it's been soldered. Um, it looks, initially looks okay. I'm going to do a better inspection um, than what I just did. I've already done this one here. I thought while I was doing this one, I should do a video on it because I do it quite often. And a lot of people, you know, freak out about the small legs on these things. As long as you have your iron, I've got my iron set at 340 degrees. And you must use a lot of resin around it. If you don't use a resin, You'll get all sorts of clumping and sticking and it'll it'll just make shorts on all the pins just about and you, you're doomed to failure. So you've got to put lines of flux and make sure it's a, a not an acid core flux or acid based flux or anything like that. That's going to um, get in there. There will always be residual under there. Uh, best thing to do is clean it off best you can. Um, I use um, acetone, I use um, uh, some of the commercial, um, what's, it called? what's it called, CO Contact Cleaner, one of the companies make that. Um, isopropyl alcohol works at the moment, I'm, I've run out and I knocked off the um, missus's um, nail polish remover. Which um, I got a little, I've got some in the cap of the nail polish remover. I get a cotton bud thing. Where are we? There we are. Cotton bud. Dip it in, and wipe along the legs like so. And hopefully you can see what's happening. I'll give it a dip on the other side of the cotton bud. It gets very, very messy and dirty very quickly. Now, if you've got solder dags on there, it's easy to tell because they'll, they'll grip the um, cotton. At the end of it, they'll start tearing at it as you go over the legs. 
So you probably know you might have, um, you know, not enough heat. It, it acted as a heat sink, took, took the heat away when you're going over that part. It's, it's probably nothing, but it's always very good to inspect why it's doing that because you could cause a short to be living there without seeing it. I know it's right there somewhere. And it's just a little bit of solder on the pin. So I wouldn't worry about it. I don't think it's any great big deal. Anyway, I'll clean this bit here up. You should probably get a a can of um, spray contact cleaner. Something that leaves no residue. And what you can do after you do this um, reflow soldering, if you want to call it reflow, well it is reflow actually. Technically, so you're on a reflow machine years ago. <clears throat> Used to make um, sensor lights for Cambrook many, many years ago. And I also um, worked on the first uh, stud finders, which Stanley uh, bought out many years ago. And we used to run um, reflow machines, which actually, um, they weren't, um, you know, proper ovens like these ones go into, but this is all, all the components on them were like, you know, the big stuff here, you know, it's all this, oops, there we go, all these big, big capacitors, big resistors, all had legs sticking out the bottom. We used to have a machine that chopped the legs off and uh, went for a solder bath. So that is how, if you really want to, do a um, clean up of these big ICs. You know, if, if you want to fix these things and you can't find out what's wrong and, and you've checked all the outputs and you checked all the test points, there's test points here, here, there's various test points under the white paint uh, under the other side of the board. And uh, yeah, this one here. I had to replace him. He was dead. He, he lost an output um, driving one of the um, um, power stage MOSFETs. That's an ADG333 if you want to know what that is. The thing. It's probably written on it. When the front end blew up it took out the uh, input uh, stage FETs. I've replaced those. Uh, Replaced um, some of the ICs down here. Um, it's a 4013. That's um, TLC 226. Two or 6.4, can't remember. I'll tell you what it is. Well, actually, I actually. Oh, yeah, I replaced it with, I didn't have any of the other chips. I put a, um, a TL064 in there. It's not as good as the um, CLC chip, but same function, same pinout, same function. It's a quad op amp anyway. It's, it's nothing fantastic. Just a, a JFET input um, op amp. But uh, the other one, I've got them on order actually, the proper one, uh, they got a lower noise figure. So, you know, if I get this going, that'll be going in. Yeah, so I haven't cleaned up the uh, resin around those chips yet. Looks rather grotty, doesn't it? But yeah, um, I've got some uh, new proper cleaner coming. Um, I've, I've run out of all my cleaners. I've got no isopropyl alcohol left. Um, I, ha I had to knock off the missus's nail polish. I well, shouldn't say that too loud. And... Uh, We'll clean all that up, but yeah, I will um, plug this in and uh, see if I have any life out of that micro. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's just um, interesting working on this stuff. It's these small pitch legs, are so damn hard. Yeah, you have a good look at it. You know, I don't have to get the focus in on it, but you know, if you have a look at those, right? They're so damn close together. The good thing about it too, how it's painted, even though I've cleaned the legs up, the paint stays between the legs, between the pads, and actually acts as a bit of a solder barrier. So it helps um, with, you know, not getting the pins bridged. But you've got to keep flux on it. Because this, if you put solder on this white paint, right, without flux, I don't know if anyone's ever if you've done it oh, I'm, going to I'm going to show you what happens um, I'm going to find a nice bit of board yeah somewhere down here if I get some solder and I say oh, okay I'll get some solder and I'll I'll solder it away there now as long as there's flux from the solder there now what happens if I burn the flux off well, there's no flux what actually happens you can see that our solder it starts sticking to the white paint it actually sticks to it so, I think you can see that. There you go. So when there's no flux, there you go. You can make a big mess of solder all over your board. Um, it'll do it there too, and you don't want to do it there on the, on the uh, ICs, on the legs. So, you need flux. If I put a bit of flux on there, out of the solder, it'll probably roll over and jump on the IC and stuff me right up. It'll ball up again and even even so it's very hard to um, remove just with the soldering iron. So if I look around here in my collection of stuff, yeah I can't find the tweezers so I'll get a pair of snips. If I get a pair of snips I just grab that solder. It's actually stuck to the board and uh, yeah pull it off. So be wary stick plenty of flux on the board if you're doing any work on these things if you're working through the white paint even after using the the little um tool here the little wire brush on them to get the paint off the actual pins always pile it on with resin you cannot have too much resin on there so that's probably um enough waffle on how to do these very very small dot pitch uh, ICs and if you want you can actually take these ICs off the board <laughs> but the way most people do it will destroy the IC um, it's just too much heat involved it, it will cause you know you've got so much componentry it's probably you know 50,000 transistors in this IC and too much heat will wreck it but you can buy this solder it's a very low melting temperature solder and what you do with it is you just um, basically put tons of resin on there and flood all the pins completely around the IC and you flood the um, IC and this stuff this solder stays uh, molten for longer and if you run your iron around really quickly and heat, heat up the uh, IC, I usually just, um, you gotta make sure it stays molten or else it'll rip every pad off the board and that's a disaster. But why it stays molten, you just get your screwdriver in there and just on the corner of the chip, just gently give it a, a pry up. So gently make sure the solder stays molten. Um, a, a trick you could do when you get the low temperature solder on the chip, um, get a hot air um, gun, like on the soldering station over there. Hang on a second, I'll point at that so you know what I'm talking about. Where are we? We don't want that, we want over there. There, yeah. I might just um, zoom this out a bit. So yeah, you get a um, hot air blaster like that, heat it right up and just as you're trying to lift the chip, go round and round and round on those pins. Not for too long. I wouldn't do it for any more than, I don't know, 15 seconds. Uh, try not to keep it. You don't need to keep the temperature right up. You just got to test what um, 
the melting point is of the low melting temperature solder. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, around and around you go. I've got a reel of it here somewhere. I haven't used it for ages, so because I, I don't really want to take off big chips. So around there again, and down there. Poor old GPX, seeing better days. But uh, that's how you do it. Anyway, I'll leave it there. Catch us later.